Hi there everyone, this is meteorologist Brian Bennett with your update on Hurricane Matthew for Monday, October 3rd. As you can see, the forecast path from the National Hurricane Center has shifted westward just a little bit, which is really not good news for anyone. Overnight tonight and tomorrow morning, we're going to see the storm moving over Haiti as a powerful major Category 3 or greater hurricane, eventually eastern Cuba, moving up over the Bahamas. And then right now, it looks like the storm should stay just offshore of Florida and Georgia and perhaps even South Carolina. But it, these areas are in the cone of uncertainty, so the possibility does exist that we could see more of a northwesterly turn, which uh, could bring up the possibility for a landfall in any one of these areas. That's the whole reason for the cone of uncertainty. Either way, we'll be dealing with a very strong hurricane. If it is offshore, it could still bring some gusty winds and perhaps even a few re heavy rain bands to parts of eastern Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina. If nothing else, we'll have very large surf, some large waves, and coastal erosion, erosion possible for eastern Florida. The Georgia Bite being tucked in a little bit kind of helps to protect it a little bit from a direct landfall. A landfall is possible in northern South Carolina or even North Carolina as we move into Saturday. Here's a look at the view from outer space, a very powerful Category 4 hurricane, winds blowing 140 miles per hour. Looking at the visible satellite imagery, you can see the eye, the center of circulation, is very well formed. It's moving off to the north, maybe even a little bit of a wobble to the northeast as it heads for Haiti. And here's Haiti right here in the direct bullseye of Hurricane Matthew. Very strong winds right now in the Central Caribbean and even seeing winds starting to pick up for parts of southern Haiti, even very eastern Jamaica, and even the Dominican Republic as well. The Hurricane Reconnaissance aircraft flew through the storm earlier today and found a central pressure of 940 millibars, indicating that we still have a healthy and very strong hurricane to contend with. All right, let's talk about the path and uh, some of the scenarios here. First of all, is it possible that the storm is going to make a turn due westerly end of the Gulf of Mexico and slam right into Tampa Bay. Well, storms do have a mind of their own and any possibility can't completely be taken off the table, but the odds of that happening are very unlikely. The winds are just not conducive for the storm to turn to the northwest and make a landfall into Tampa Bay. And that really takes one of the, the bigger threats off the table, that threat being storm surge. So fortunately, Tampa Bay doesn't look like it has to worry anything about storm surge. And the same thing goes for our Gulf Coast states as well. The odds of this storm moving into the Gulf of Mexico at this point are very unlikely. So some of the folks in these areas can rest a bit easier. All right, what about the storm moving northward into Haiti? It is going to do so overnight tonight into the day tomorrow, which means very rough weather for just all of Haiti, including Port-au-Prince. Kingston, Jamaica looking a bit better than it did earlier in the week. Initially, it looked like Kingston was going to take a direct impact, but it's actually going to be more of western Haiti. And then the storm rolls over eastern Cuba as a major hurricane. And really a worst case scenario here for the Bahamas, with this particular path, it takes it pretty much through all the islands of the Bahamas. And perhaps more importantly, it takes it right over the very bustling and busy town of Nassau, Bahamas, as well as a major hurricane. Right now, there is a hurricane warning in red here for Haiti, eastern Cuba, and most of the Bahamas, and a hurricane watch in effect for the northwestern Bahamas. Right now, the path of the hurricane looks like it's going to be such that it should remain offshore of the east coast of Florida. If it does, then it will bring the east coast of Florida, perhaps some rain bands, perhaps a breezy or gusty wind conditions, very rough seas and large surf, and also the possibility for coastal erosion. If the storm happens to make a turn more to the northwest, obviously those conditions would be uh, exasperated quite a bit as a more northwesterly track would bring stronger winds and heavier rain and of course larger storm surge threat as well. Tampa Bay could even see a little bit of rain from this based on how far away the storm happens to go from Tampa Bay all the way to the center of the circulation. And that's why we have that cone of uncertainty as there is some uncertainty about how far east or west this hurricane is going to go. Right now, the Georgia Bight looks like it should be fairly protected being kind of tucked in here. On the other hand, the Carolinas are sticking out like a sore thumb. So a landfall is possible in coastal South Carolina or even North Carolina at this point. Here's a look at the 
GFS model and you can see Florida right here, the United States right here, the eastern seaboard and we can see the storm right here, this bright red and white color. As we go through time, the storm rolls over Haiti, eastern Cuba, the Bahamas. The GFS model has the storm getting way too close for comfort to the east coast of Florida. This would be on Thursday that the storm would be just offshore. Again, way too close for comfort as a possibility does exist that it could make more of a northwesterly turn, which again would really ramp up the wind speeds and rain for eastern Florida. Right now, the model has the storm remaining offshore and then actually continuing to go to the north, maybe even strengthening a little bit over the warm waters of the Gulf Stream and then possibly making a landfall uh, right now the model has it making a landfall around Myrtle Beach so a landfall in the Carolinas is not completely out of the question the storm then continues to roll off to the north bringing very large surf and coastal erosion and gusty winds to parts of the northeast and New England and then turning perhaps back northwest into parts of New England and Nova Scotia as it gets pulled into a low pressure system kind of setting up in Canada so a strong extra tropical storm with hurricane force winds are possible again in New England and Nova Scotia as we head towards next weekend and even early part of the next week all right so that was the kind of a zoomed out view of the GFS model here's a closer view if the storm does follow that path you can see how close it is to Florida really again too close for comfort we could see winds gusting in coastal Jacksonville or even Cape Canaveral winds could be gusting around 45 miles per hour based on this precise track here again you can see how if the storm were to move westward by even 150 miles winds would be much stronger as same thing goes if the storm goes farther east <laughs> then we're going to see less of an impact from the storm along the east coast of Florida. So right now it's kind of a watch and see type scenario. And then as the storm moves off to the north, it looks like it could impact the Carolinas. If it does make landfall in the Carolinas, we're looking at wind speeds possibly around 90 miles per hour or so. So this could be a ser serious scenario for parts of coastal Carolinas, especially North Carolina as the storm continues to move off to the north. All right, that's the GFS model, which is the American model. Here's a look at the European model, which historically is a very dependable model. It's been a little wacky with this storm system, kind of not really honing in on an exact solution, but uh, nonetheless, it historically is a good run. So it is also starting to get in line with the GFS as well. So I do want to show the European run here. Very similar to the GFS. Too close for comfort to the east coast of Florida. Again, gusty winds for the east coast and a little breezy possibly for, tip, for Tampa Bay on this scenario. And again, maybe a little bit of rain moving in Tampa Bay as well. But the main impact from the storm would be along the east coast of Florida with gusty winds and of course maybe a few rain bands moving in as well. As the storm moves farther north, the European model is keeping the center of circulation offshore of the Carolinas but again, just a little bit of a wiggle to the northwest, and we would be contending with the center of circulation moving on shore in the Carolinas, and then we'll have to continue to watch the storm as it moves off to the north as well. So the here and now. The storm is going to move into Haiti. And what I wanted to show you here, this is actually, this is Haiti right here, and this river represents the Dominican Republic. You notice anything? Notice that we have trees here in the Dominican Republic, and no trees a staggering 98% of trees have been deforested in Haiti. That's really poor management of their ecosystem. And that's also really bad news when it comes to the risk for mudslides. We're looking at the possibility for up to 40 inches of rain in parts of Haiti. You take that much rain, you put it on these hilltops that don't have trees to hold in all of this soil and that soil could come sliding down and moving into the towns that lay in the valley so very poor ecosystem management and parts of Haiti are going to result in possibly some devastating effects we're going to see bridges and roads washed out from this hurricane and it's also going to place a lot of lives at risk as well when we had Sandy back in 2012 it was a glancing blow of Haiti but yet 75 people perished and the storm and it caused millions of dollars worth of damage with this storm i wouldn't rule out the possibility that we could see and again i hate to talk about this but we could see a casualty rate in the hundreds 
if not even closer to a thousand, depending on exactly how well the communities have prepared for this. Again, one of the main threats are actually caused by the deforestation that has occurred in part of Haiti. So a very rough night and day tomorrow for Haiti as the storm moves over the communities there. And of course, we'll be praying for the folks in Haiti and also hopefully organizations are preparing to send aid once this hurricane has moved through. On a lighter note, you can see that uh, we're looking at very little boat traffic. A lot of cruises have been canceled for parts of Jamaica and Haiti and uh, parts of the Bahamas and Cuba for good reason. Cruise ships should not be going into this storm, not a major hurricane. So a lot of cruise ships are deciding to either cancel or perhaps delay a lot of their cruises. And you're starting to see a few more ships still relocating once you get up to the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas. All right, so again, a rough night tonight for Haiti, and then the storm starts to move off to the north-northwest, which each and every day I'll continue to monitor this and have more updates on the path and the impact that it could have potentially on the United States. Till then, guys, have a great and safe evening, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.